The stars come out in our final story for some nighttime fun. There's a new public observatory in southern Montana where curiosity, community, and the cosmos all come together. We'll let these night owls in Red Lodge tell us just how much they love Montana's big, dark sky. It's, uh, it's almost a meditative experience when you come out and look at the sky. You do, you know, obviously see how small you are in the big scheme of things. And also, experiencing it with other people is a community event. That one. Yeah. Oh, I see. Check that out. Is he yeah. that cool? That's pretty cool. Jeremy Battles is one of the familiar faces at Whistler Observatory, Red Lodge's new home for stargazing with friends and neighbors. You know, you can kind of just be alone with your thoughts, but then, uh, you know, share various things. It's almost like, almost like sitting around a campfire as well. Look, there's one right up there. They're starting to pop. <laughs> Oh, that's part of Virgo. It's hard to think of a hobby older than stargazing, and somehow connecting the dots in the night sky still holds up, even in a world full of high-tech entertainment. You can actually take a moment to really experience wonder. That's not to say there's no technology here. Telescopes and cameras allow for peering further into space and capturing otherworldly scenes. These images are all courtesy of Jeremy, chair of the local Dark Skies Group, and as you can see, quite the astrophotographer. Some of our larger scopes here, we can get um, pretty good visual images of galaxies that are, um, you know, completely invisible to the naked eye. And those are whole other, you know, universes under themselves. <laughs> Those are photons that left those galaxies, in some cases, 100 million years ago. And there you are, uh, it's hitting your retina. That's a pretty cool uh, concept. Jeremy's been at this for a while. What's new is having a dedicated place to do it. Uh, having a place where you can do it that's not uh, down in town really, really helps. And uh, having, having a place to keep large telescopes like this one um, is uh, really helpful too because you can imagine lugging this uh, out is quite a process so having somewhere where it can be set up more or less instantly is pretty great. The Whistler Observatory is a place where uh, our community and visitors to our community can just visit the night sky and visit with each other and grow meaning in our place among the universe. Teresa Whistler was the driving force behind the observatory, which was named for her late husband, Ken Whistler, who passed away in January 2020. It's a place where we can educate the community about the importance of preserving and protecting our night sky. It's a place where you can go and, and just stand in awe without having to belong to an organization or paying a fee. It's just right here in your backyard. Teresa was there as they officially cut the ribbon on Whistler Observatory in April 2024 with a whole host of supporters. The day turned out not just to be about astronomy, but an homage to the legacy of her husband. On the day of the dedication, I felt that I was just the luckiest person in the world to have the support of the community. And I felt that, you know, I had finally um, put Ken to rest. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but that was what I set out to do, is find a way to memorialize him in the community. So um, it was just the most wonderful day. As Red Lodge High School teacher Kurt Nell put it, Ken was a guy with infectious curiosity and enthusiasm. There's a cool quote by Neil deGrasse Tyson that talks about kids. Kids are born scientists. They want to know why. They want to know how things work. And somewhere along the line, be it parents or teachers or life, kind of beats it out of us. Um, and Ken never lost that. He never lost that. And he modeled it for everybody else, which was, I think was just absolutely amazing. The Whistler Observatory is an outgrowth of another project of Ken and Teresa Whistler, a place called Heroes Steam that serves as a learning lab and exploration center 
for the curious kids of Red Lodge. For Teresa, the observatory feels like a fitting extension of that and a great tribute. He'd be so happy. <laughs> um, Ken was always looking for a way to share what he had. There's something about standing outside and just meeting your neighbors with no agenda, just showing up and enjoying that together that, that I think uh, people are looking for. And, and I think it's a part of that trend where we're trying to hang on to things that we notice are, are starting to miss in our cities or, or miss in our lives. Noticeably, you know, the sky is a part of our environment. If you're feeling star parties might be right up your alley, there are other places in Montana to do it. Helena and Missoula both have observatories, and in the east, Medicine Rocks State Park is recognized as a dark skies sanctuary. Just some of the great places for stargazing in Montana.